Hello. I thought I'd look in some American papers to see what they're saying about Nutmeg and the book by Tom Bauer. I picked the first three that came to mind. Number one, the Washington Post. If Nutmeg opens her mouth widely enough, you may see the editor of the Washington Post's tongue. It was arse-licking at its worst. Every Nutmeg article was like they believed everything she told Oprah. Number two, the New York Times. They didn't seem to notice Tom Bauer's book. They didn't seem to notice Nutmeg at all. Very fair. A non-entity, ex-actress, ex-royal, soon-to-be ex-wife again. Then I found number three, the New York Post. They wrote a truthful account of the goings-on over the last six long years. But I'll let you judge for yourself. So it's by Maureen Callahan. Meghan Markle revealed for what she really is, a Kardashian. After a fresh humiliation by booing crowds at the Queen's Jubilee, here comes another blow to the Duke and Duchess of Woke. Revenge the much-anticipated book by British investigative reporter Tom Bauer may not offer much new information, but it shines a deep dive into their psyches. The folly à deux on display here is worthy of a Highsmith novel. Two very broken people stoking each other's rage grievances and delusions of grandeur, believing in their unstoppable rise, even as they fall ever downward. What other modern-day couple would wear their expulsion from the British royal family so dementedly, like a badge of honour, while clinging to their royal titles? The great question is, how such privileged people got this way? Bauer provides some answers. Of Meghan's early life, we learn that she was always a fabricator. My word, a liar. Her childhood memories of the Rodney King riots. I remember rushing back home, seeing ash fall from the sky, and smelling the smoke, and seeing it bellow out of buildings, and seeing people run out of buildings, carrying bags and looting. Well, maybe she saw that on the news. According to her estranged father, Thomas, he drove young Meghan to Palm Springs that day, on day one of the riots. Meghan, Thomas makes clear, wanted for nothing, except her mother, who spent several years of Meghan's life off doing her own thing, leaving Thomas the primary parent. For those armchair psychologists wondering about the roots of Markle's narcissistic injury, we have a working theory. Maternal rejection at a formative age. Harry, of course, was traumatised by the death of his mother, his rage compounded by ranking as the royal spare. I'm not the important one, he once said. Harry's grief and anger manifested in substance abuse, depression, the destruction of his fellow students' property, and his poor treatment of girlfriends Chelsea Davy and Cressida Bonas. He lacked class, was unromantic, 
unserious, short-tempered and imperious, Bower writes. Both women found him ungenerous. Bower calls him feckless towards women. Harry is also painted as quite dim, struggling, despite great help and leeway with passing his classes at Eton, a D student at best. It makes all his unending pontificating, most recently to a thin crowd of stragglers at the UN, that much more insufferable. As for Markle, whose motto it can never be said enough is Be kind. <laughs> the higher she climbs, the worse she treats others. It's like she has imposter syndrome. Lacking talent, charm, intelligence or class, her only way up is through marriage. Megan lashes out at the very people paid to make her life easier, better, happier. Relish Bower's detail from her early days. Markle dreaming of being the face of L'Oreal, saddled instead with spokesmodelling for a mid-level Canadian clothing chain. Her frustration unleashed on the poor crew. Ignoring the flower displays, bottles of her favourite wine, and a special calligraphy pen laid out on the tables, she criticised the hotel's temperpedic bathrobe and slippers. She wanted deal. The tea was the wrong blend, and the vegan green juice was warm. Bauer also dishes on that infamous row with Kate Middleton. You know, the one Megan told Oprah she wouldn't discuss, except to say that Kate made me cry right before her wedding. But Megan, being such a bigger person, had accepted Kate's apology and flowers and simply couldn't bear to demonise her sister-in-law. The palace so expert at playing the long game, has finally leaked their version of Bower. And surprise, surprise, they say it was Bridezilla, Megan, who, as rumour long had it, called Kate's toddler Charlotte, lacking in the flower girl department, who made a hormonal postpartum Kate cry, and who, upon Kate later showing up at Megan's door, flowers in hand, not offering an apology so much as a warning to stop treating palace staff so terribly. She took Kate's flowers, threw them in the garbage, and slammed the door in the future queen's face. Remember everyone, be kind. There's more great stuff. Megan telling Harry her Vanity Fair cover was pegged to her TV show on basic cable with absolutely nothing to do with their romance. Cover line, she's just wild about Harry. Serena Williams telling Mo Megan's profiler that despite Megan's claims, they were not close friends. Princess Diana's sisters telling Harry that, despite what he saw in her, no, Meghan was nothing like his, his mother. The long-term friends of both Harry and Meghan, who learned the day of both Harry and... Excuse me. <coughs> the, who learned the day of... That they were uninvited... To the wedding, they were invited to the wedding, but not the reception. Unlike Oprah and the Clooney's total strangers, 
The staffers who fled from Meghan's employ in tears, even Prince William intervening and telling Harry that his wife's behaviour was unacceptable. Harry watching the crown and blabbing to an acquaintance that his family and royal life in general is much worse than that. Harry and Meghan's hissy fits at the Jubilee, desperately needing to provide Netflix with actual royal content, yet getting kicked to the proverbial curb. And Harry and Meghan still see themselves as the Obama's 2.0. If anything, this book ratifies the world's growing disregard for these two hypocrites, so divorced from reality that they surely believe their Netflix reality show, excuse me, docuseries, will elevate their brand rather than reveal it for the cynical, resentful, grasping entity it truly is. Megan is no humanitarian. She's a Kardashian. I gave up my entire life for this family, Meghan gripes towards the end of Bower's book. I was willing to do whatever it takes. But here we are. Well, for the moment, if there's one thing Harry and Meghan do successfully, it's continuing to sink lower than we ever thought they could. The comments after it are all pretty damning as well. That woman has upset three future kings of the UK and the Queen and Australia. It's just not a clever thing to do. I can't imagine New Zealand or South Africa liking her much either. When she was 18, her car registration plate said, Classy Girl. If you drive a car saying that, then you most certainly are not a classy girl. Oh, more than half of my viewers haven't subscribed, so if you haven't, please think about it. I'm a very small channel, and if you're subscribed, if you press the bell next to the subscribe button and press all, you'll get a notification when I upload a video, because my timing of my videos is quite random. If you like the video, please press the like button. And I would love to have more comments from you. I'd like to know who you are, what you want from the channel. It's a small channel, but I'd like it to be a small community of like-minded people. Oh, and apparently if you share, it's good for the algorithm and more people see my videos. So if you're going to bed somewhere in the world, nighty night, don't let the squad bite.